<clears throat> okay, folks, if you could go ahead and take your seats for those that are with us here physically, and if you are joining us virtually, I'm assuming you are already in your seat. We are going to go ahead and, and get things going. I would like to welcome everyone this afternoon to the 2021 Faculty Honors Ceremony. This is a, uh, certainly a, a joyful occasion and we're delighted to recognize our Faculty Award winners here today. Um, we greatly value uh, the efforts of our faculty both in teaching and research service and, and advising. And again, I would consider these to be the core responsibilities of any of our faculty here on campus. <clears throat> what we do know in addition to these core responsibilities are other uh, duties, I guess, as assigned that come up to successfully engage in teaching research service and advising. For example, in teaching, um, it, it's very common that you're up, updating your courses with, with new relevant information. Um, you're, you're rebuilding your course, uh, either in a hybrid or a high flex format, which we had a lot of experience with this past year. Um, you're using technology in the classroom that you may or may not have done in the past. So this extra work uh, is certainly recognized in, in the area of research. Again, you're, you're writing grants, you're engaging with uh, different institutions and faculty across the country and the world to collaborate in advancing new knowledge and knowledge creation. You're meeting with industry partners, you're mentoring students, in the research and the creative endeavors process outside of the classroom and in many cases, uh, again, uh, on your own time in the evenings and on the weekend and we certainly recognize that. And in the area of service, you're constantly giving to the institution through committee service, whether we're writing new policy, whether we're, we're developing procedures to administer student scholarships, financial aid, the list goes on. And then in the area of advising, again, and, and there, this is countless, the, the hours of time that you are faculty put in uh, to mentor and guide our students, not just simply with course selection and scheduling, but again, research interests, uh, career goals, graduate school ambitions, counseling, um, whether it be with personal problems, learning difficulties, or uh, maybe, you know, they have a roommate that snores, I don't know. But, but again, you know, as a faculty, you deal with all of the issues. So I want to just take one second before we move in to uh, the recognition um, of our faculty award winners. I um, want to take just one second and thank each of you, each of our uh, individual faculty, for your efforts that you have portrayed and contributed to the institution and to our students over the last year uh, as a result of the pandemic. Um, and I can tell you by any measure, any metric that we look at, um, you all as a faculty have succeeded. Um, I, I, again, it was a challenge, um, but we have come through it we're, and we're going to come out. The light is at the end of the tunnel. Um, we are preparing vigorously for the fall and for the summer uh, as, uh, as we deliver our courses in pre-COVID conditions. So again, my sincere thanks uh, to all of you uh, with your efforts over the last 12 months. So I'm going to stand here, I'm going to virtually salute you and thank you. And um, you know, I look forward, I've been here two years now, I look forward to the day when we can have this ceremony and it will happen next year in its traditional format and a face-to-face -face format. I'm excited to, instead of being st standing here with just maybe 20 or 30 of you, having a couple hundred, uh, uh, if not more, so that we can celebrate Again, the efforts of our, of our outstanding faculty. The first group that I would like to recognize today 
are those faculty that have met the milestones of uh, years of service and those faculty that will be retiring and leaving the institution for uh, greener fields or the beach or the mountains, where, wherever their retirement plans take them. Um, before I <clears throat> move into that, I want to take a moment and make uh, one special announcement uh, that will be new to the institution as part of this ceremony. The chancellor has announced um, that he will be hosting this year an inaugural event called the Chancellor's Faculty Tribute in which he will again host and it will be an event to recognize the contributions of our retiring faculty and those that have, that have met the milestones for years of service. Our first Chancellor's Faculty Tribute will be held on May 5th from 5 to 6 o'clock. We have yet to determine the location. We'll, we're still working on that. All of you that are being recognized uh, for years of service and retiring faculty, you will be receiving in the next uh, few days more information and a personal invite on that. So let me start with 15 years of service. Could I have the first slide, please? Again, you can see our names here for 15 years of service. Um, again, for time purposes, I'm going to not read every name, but I think all of you can see them. And again, everyone listed here will be invited to the Chancellor's inaugural event. If we could go to 20 years of service. So again, uh, you can take a look at our um, uh, faculty that have been with us for 20 years. And that in and of itself is uh, again a significant accomplishment. 15 years, heavens, five years is, a, is an accomplishment. Can um, we move on now to 25 years of service? 25 years. And we have three faculty in this, uh, in, in this milestone. 30 years of service. Again, uh, impressive to say the least. We're going to go to 35 years of service. 35 years of service. Denise Manning. And I will mention Denise Manning. I don't know Denise, but 35 years deserves at least uh, for me to say her name. And then, this is not a typo. I, when I first got my script, I thought there was a typo. The next slide is 55 years of service. Let me say that again. 55 years of service. Can we have it? Dr. Jerry Crawford, Professor of Economics. So again, um, we certainly congratulate and recognize each of our uh, individuals that are listed on those slides for their, dedi their dedication, their commitment to the institution. And again, there will be a formal face-to-face -face recognition and celebration of their efforts on May 5th. I now would like to move into those faculty that are uh, going to be leaving the institution. They're going to be retiring. They're off to new adventures uh, in, in whatever phase of their life cycle they, they decide to do so. <clears throat> From the College of Agriculture, we have Dr. Greg Phillips, who is a professor of agriculture. From the College of Engineering and Computer Science, Dr. Edward Hammerand. Again, an Associate Professor of Computer Science. Dr. Jeff Junes, an Associate Professor of Computer Science from the College of Education and Behavioral Science. Cindy Nichols, who's an instructor in Curriculum and Special Education. Dr. Joe Nichols, a Professor of Educational Leadership. From the College of Liberal Arts and Communication, Dr. Richard Burns, a professor of English. Helen Duclos, an instructor of English. Dr. Gil Fowler, a professor of journalism. Dr. Rick, Rick Lott, a professor of English. Colin Pillow, instructor of media and journalism. John Salvis, a professor of art. Dr. Alexander Sidorenko, if I got that right, professor of history, 
and Dr. Richard Wang, Associate Professor of Political Science. From the Neil Griffin College of Business, Dr. Sandra Bevel, a Professor of Business Communication. Also from the College of Business, Dr. Ralph Ruby, Emeritus Professor of Computer and Information Technology. From the College of Nursing and Health Professions, Annette Bednar, Assistant Professor of Clinical Lab Science, Karen Blue, Assistant Professor of Nursing, Karen Fullen, Program Director of Social Work, Kathy Hall, Associate Professor of Nursing, Dr. Susan Hanrahan, Dean and Professor of Physical Therapy, and Judith Freemer, Assistant Professor of Nursing. And finally, from the College of Science and Mathematics, Dr. David Gilmore, Professor of Microbiology, and Dr. Diane Gilmore, Instructor of Biology. I'm assuming these two may be related, but I don't know for sure on that one. That concludes the list. And again, we greatly appreciate the years of service uh, these retirees have given to the institution. And again, look forward to seeing all of them in a face-to-face -face format, in a physical format, on May 5th. Let's take one moment while we're all here together, virtually and physically, to give these folks a uh, round, of, round of applause. <clears throat> Arkansas State University has a tradition, um, a, a well-established tradition, of recognizing faculty members each year uh, in the areas of excellence for advising, for professional service, for teaching, and research and creative endeavors. The individuals that we are recognizing today have been recommended and nominated by faculty, staff, and students. The recipients are winners today. In each category, will receive a monetary prize of $2,500. My remarks about each recipient have been taken from the nomination letters that have been submitted by students, by faculty, and staff, and or administrators. <clears throat> We are going to start with our Excellence in Advising Award. Our, um, this is our first award. If um, I'm going to uh, announce your name as a finalist, when I announce your name, if you could please stand up. So our first nominee, Dr. Kelly Wilson Buford from the College of Liberal Arts and Communication. I don't know if Kelly is here. And um, Dr. Addie Fleming from the College of Nursing and Health Professions. Thank you. This year's recipient exemplifies outstanding advising in many ways and at many different levels. These include official advising activities through teaching and mentoring students. As a faculty member under, under uh, severe time constraints of teaching service research, this recipient gives full attention to student advising. Student recommendation letters mention that this person has been a notable mentor in their college careers. She stands out because she always remembers and follows up on both their personal and academic successes and challenges. This nominee is the primary advisor to undergraduates and additionally oversees dozens of internships each year. Along with uh, traditional advising responsibilities, she mentors students on technology use in the classroom, coursework development, and classroom organization. This, individual, uh, this individual's advisees are truly mentored in order to develop both personally and professionally. These are connections with students that often extend well beyond graduation here at the institution. This recipient is known for her in, in her department as knowledgeable, personable, professional and is admired by students and colleagues alike. Folks, Dr. Kelly Wilson Buford is a perfect recipient for our Faculty Advising Award. Accepting for Dr. Um, Dr. Wilson Buford's award on her behalf will be Dr. Justin Castro. 
chair of the history department and, and Dean Cates, dean of the college. At this time, would you both come forward for a photograph? And let's give um, Dr. Buford a big round of applause. Please do. <clears throat> We're going to now move into the Excellence and Professional Service Award. Our next award, um, again, is the Excellence and Professional Service. Uh, if you're with us, again, and I mentioned your name, if you could please stand to be recognized. Doctor, our first nominee is Dr. Kimberly Davis from the College of Education and Behavioral Science. Our next nominee, Dr. Sarah Labovitz, if I got that correct, correct, from the College of Liberal Arts and Communication. And our third nominee, Dr. David Zhang from the College of Engineering and Computer Science. Let me say a few words about our recipient. This year's recipient received nominations <coughs> from staff, community members, and out-of-state colleagues. While teaching a, a full course load of 15 hours, this recipient makes time to maintain a notable list of professional service activities. She serves as a faculty advisor for several student groups, <clears throat> chairs and serves on a number of college committees, works diligently in student recruitment and outreach, dedicates time to strategic planning, assessment, and faculty development. One unique and notable area of service a recipient has participated in recently is the creation of COVID guidelines for the music department, which took an extensive amount of research and collaboration. In addition, several colleagues rec rec recognize the nominee's value of sage advice and dedication. She makes a department the best it can be while constantly looking out for ways to improve curriculum and streamline processes. Also contributing to the recipient's long list of service to the university and community is providing professional development for area music educators, acting as a personal mentor for numerous music students and developing music curriculum. Folks, please join me in congratulating Dr. Sarah Labovitz from the College of Liberal Arts and Communication. Dr. Labovitz and Dean Cates, please come forward to receive your award. Our next award is the Excellence in Teaching Award. Again, if you're a finalist, if you could please stand to be recognized uh, when I call your name. Our first nominee, <clears throat> excuse me, is Dr. Jessica Camp from the College of Nursing and Health Professions. Dr. Rachel Isom from the College of Liberal Arts and Communication. And Dr. Sun Kim from the College of Agriculture. This year's recipient of the teaching award is an individual who has a significant positive impact on students, particularly in the area of innovative and collaborative teaching. The individual 
is known to be very dedicated and intentional in, in ensuring their students not only understand the course content, but also develop critical thinking skills. While the transition to online learning was challenging for many, students praised this faculty member's ability to keep coursework both engaging and interesting. Outside of the classroom, this individual participated in extensive professional development opportunities in online teaching, taking extra steps to ensure that they would be well prepared for their teaching delivery. Dr. Rachel Isom, you're a valued teacher at Arkansas State University and well deserving of the teaching award. Dr. Isom and Dean Cates, if you could please come forward. Our next award is the Emerging Faculty Scholar Award, uh, which was previously known as the Excellence and Scholarship Award. This, this is an exciting change to our faculty awards and honors program in, in which we are now as an institution going to recognize a pre-tenured faculty for their research and creative endeavors uh, and their scholarly efforts. Again, if you are a finalist for this award, I'd ask if you're with us, please stand to be recognized. Our first nominee, Dr. Elizabeth Chamberlain from the College of Liberal Arts and Communication, and Dr. Lori Newman Lee from the College of Science and Mathematics. <clears throat> this year's recipient of the Emerging Faculty Scholar Award has been a leader on our campus in the Digital Humanities Research Institute and the Faculty Center's Curriculum and Re Retention Grant Team. This recipient has had numerous peer-reviewed publications, referee book chapters, grant awards, and has spent a significant amount of time presenting their work, their research, and, and rhetoric and composition uh, at professional meetings. In the last year, in the last year, I'm going to say that again, this nominee has been published three times, with her most work being Staging Ingenuity, a Pedagogical Framework of Mobilizing Creative Genre Uptake. Say that three times fast. These publications range from mixed method analysis to creative pedagogy to meme rhetoric. This mix of both creative and scholarly work is quite impressive, especially at this stage of her career. As a faculty member who has dedicated notable time and effort to their research, Dr. Elizabeth Chamberlain is a perfect example of an emerging faculty scholar on our campus. Congratulations, Dr. Chamberlain. You and Dr. Cates, please come forward. It is now my pleasure to call up our Chancellor, uh, Dr. Kelly Dampfus, who is going to make the presentation of our next award. Thank you, Dr. Utter. Welcome to everyone who's here. We are presenting today the inaugural Chancellor's Medal for Research and Creative Activities. This award is the result and the benefit of uh, a wonderful gift by one of our distinguished alumni, uh, Colonel Buddy Beck and the Beck Foundation who made this award possible. The inaugural Chancellor's Medal for Research and Creative Activities is the highest honor that a faculty member can receive because of their research and creative activities. Award criteria is based on 
Research endeavors, publications, presentations, performances, and exhibits, and grants received. The medal is being designed and cast as we speak. In fact, we just got the gift recently, and the original plan was to have the award given, be given next year. Uh, but I asked Mr. Beck if we could actually award it this year, and he generously gave the funds to make it possible for this year. And so we don't have a medal yet, but we will have one soon. So I think we have a picture of it up there. There we go. That's what the medal will look like. Uh, the medal medalist will have this uh, medal permanently and will be invited to wear it uh, as part of their academic regalia and will be invited to process in with the May graduates uh, graduation ceremony. They will follow right behind the faculty senate president who's carrying the university mace and in front of the chancellor as they process in for the ceremony. The medalist will also be on the stage, will be introduced there representing the faculty as well. By the way, having this new award for, for our distinguished researchers and creative activities, uh, to recognize research and creative activities, allowed us to turn the old award into a new award for junior scholars. And so the most, most recent award that Elizabeth just won was made possible indirectly because of this award as well. So we're excited about that. It aligns very closely with our strategic plan on establishing uh, stronger ways to recognize the research and creative activities that are being done by our faculty here at Arkansas State. In addition to the medal, the recipient of this award will receive a $5,000 stipend. And so it's uh, actually a, a doubles the size of the award that we had available for researchers last year. If you are a finalist for, this, for the Chancellor's Medal for Research and Creative Activities, please stand and be recognized at this time. These individuals are Dr. Beth Hood, College of Agriculture. Dr. Hood, let's give her a round of applause. Dr. Travis Marcico, College of Science and Mathematics. And Dr. Libby Nix, uh, College of Nursing and Health Professions. Dr. Nix. I didn't see you hiding in the back there. The recipient of this award is someone who in the last year alone has authored six peer-reviewed manuscripts presented research at four national and international conferences, and served as a principal investigator for five external gr research grants, which averaged the annual award exceeded $700,000. Nominators note that this recipient remained, uh, remained extraordinarily productive during the last year despite the challenges associated with serving as the interim chair and in the midst of a global pandemic. While balancing these duties, the nominee continued notable research in the sciences, collaborated with colleagues, and continued to mentor students. Thanks to his remarkable work and vision for the future and commitment to our institution, A-State has continued to make strides in scholarly research. It is my pleasure now to present this inaugural award to Dr. Travis Marcico, our inaugural Chancellor Scholar for Research and Creative Activities. Congratulations, Dr. Marcico. Thank you, Chancellor, and congratulations, Dr. Marcico. I want to take just a moment now and, again, congratulate all of our award nominees. It is, a, again, a significant accomplishment to be recognized and nominated for one of, one of these awards by your colleagues and your, and your peers. Um, <clears throat> I want to remind um, our award winners, if uh, once we conclude here, I have just a few more uh, exiting statements. Our award winners, if you could come up front, uh, we're going to get one group photo of you all, and we have uh, some paperwork uh, for you to, to fill out so that you indeed can receive your uh, stipend. Um, a few things here. One, again, uh, we look forward to seeing our, our faculty milestone years of service folks and our retirees 
at, again, uh, the inaugural Chancellor's Faculty Tribute on May 5th at 5 o'clock. And then I also would like to encourage all of you, not here, only here with us physically, but all of our faculty that are, that are out there uh, on Zoom somewhere, um, again, that next week, to me, uh, epitomizes why we're here, and that's to celebrate the research and creative endeavors of our students that have been mentored by you throughout this past year, given all the challenges that you've had to deal with. I want to just take a moment and thank each of you that have mentored students that will be presenting their research and creative endeavors next week, that you've taken the time to do it given everything else that you've had to deal with. We will have over 200 presentations, original research presentations, being delivered over a three-day format, um, again, starting on Monday, and I believe at 12.30 they'll begin, and we'll go Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with awards recognition on Thursday. So I hope everyone can make time out of their schedule to log in and, and uh, take a look at the outstanding work that's being done by our students that are being mentored by you, our, our faculty. With that said, this concludes our faculty award ceremony. Again, my congratulations to all the nominees, the recipients for your outstanding work and contributions to Arkansas State University. I wish you all uh, a great end of the semester and uh, look forward to the year ahead. Thank you. So again, if I could have our um, award winners please come forward.